Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Rabbi Shalom Yamini, and each week we will look into the weekly Torah portion to find practical and insightful ways to enhance your daily life. This week's Parsha Perspective is in honor of the Rafua Shalema, the complete and speedy recovery of Rav Amitai Ben Shoshana, Leih Mencha Baskito, Shu'ol Ben Brita, and Dalit Bat Shoshana. This week's Parsha Perspective is in loving memory of Edward Ben Ephraim, Shlomo Ben Edward, and Yerachmiel Daniel Ben Gedalia. May their souls be uplifted and may their memories be a blessing. This week's Torah portion is Parshas Kisetze, Building Fences. Our Parsha continues Moshe's final address to the Jewish people. He begins with the law of how a soldier can marry a female captive of war, a mandate that the firstborn son always has a right to a double portion of his father's property, and the unique laws of a ben Sire Umar, a rebellious and wayward son. There are over 70 mitzvahs in our parsha, and some of the more notable ones are Hashavah Savida, returning a less object to its owner, the Shiloh Chakan, which is an obligation to send away the mother bird before taking her young, the mitzvah of wearing tzitzis, and the laws against wearing shatnas, any garment that has a mixture of wool and linen. However, a question comes to mind. We have previously spoken about the laws of a rebellious and wayward son, the Ben Sore Amora, and you can go to ParshaPerspective.com to listen to that episode or download that article. But Moshe continues to give many mitzvahs, and amongst them is the laws of building a fence. When a person buys a new home or builds a new home, they are required to construct a fence on the roof. And although this fence is extremely important from a safety perspective, does building a fence need to be a specific mitzvah? Why is it a biblical commandment? The Rabbeinu B'chai Rav Bachi bin Usher gives a very simple explanation. He writes that the Torah previously mentioned in Parshas Ve'eschanan, Rak hishmar lecha ushmar nafshcha ma'id. Look out for yourself and guard your life especially. Since the property owner can be liable for negligence, Moshe emphasizes this safety measure. The Pasuk concludes, V'loi sasim domim b'beisecha ki yipo hanoifel mimenu. So that you will not bring guilt on your home if anyone falls from your roof. This indicates that the homeowner is at fault and responsible if someone falls from the roof. And therefore, since failure to build this fence can lead to the death of a precious human being, a precious soul, it is a biblical commandment to construct a barrier to protect and preserve life. However, Rashi Rav Shlomo Yitzchaki, the leading commentary on the Torah, gives us a deeper and more profound explanation. He writes that the Pasuk above was speaking about the mitzvah of Shilu HaKan, sending away the mother bird before taking her young. Moshe Rabbeinu is stating that if we perform that mitzvah, not only will we receive the stated reward, a long and joyous life, but also a home for ourselves and our families to enjoy and experience that long life. Rashi continues that the next few psukim are laws regarding vineyards, fields, and animals. He explains that if we follow this commandment and construct a fence, we will merit to plant and enjoy wine from our vineyards, to spend the money we profit from the wool and leather that our animals provide. Moish Rabbeinu is giving us a step-by-step guide how to thoroughly enjoy our physical and spiritual lives. It begins by following God's commandments, like sending away the mother bird, even if we don't understand. And when we receive the reward for that action, we have new ways to thank God and truly see how all of our blessings are from Him. For all the opportunities to do many good deeds stems from doing one good deed, especially if we don't understand it or don't want to. This immensely powerful lesson is especially relevant as we prepare for Rosh Hashanah, the day of judgment, the day that we crown God as King, and Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. Since part of our preparation should be the addition of new mitzvahs daily, new commandments, new kindness, new compassion from our soul for a year of spiritual blessings and physical rewards, please God. In our daily life, it is imperative that we realize that altruistic actions pave the path for satisfaction, meaning, and purpose to flow into our life, into our souls. When we are kind and charitable to others, we build a community that brings out the best in each other and they join in our celebrations and uplift us when we are downhearted or sad. Most importantly, they allow us to do the same and share our soul's light with the rest of the world. There's a powerful quote that I read. 
Act the way you would like to be, and soon you will be the way you act. Have a great weekend, and good Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to The Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.